you got to do something for the Lord. Years of observation has shown me that the people in whom the Holy Spirit flows the most, those the ones who just stay on fire all the time, those who are, have a freshness about them, they're the ones who give themselves to serve the Lord. They're the ones that are serving. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is an empowerment to serve. And unfortunately, you know, some people are kind of like the Dead Sea. Has anybody ever been to the Dead Sea? I've floated in the Dead Sea. I ain't floating in it again. I had that experience. It's all nasty on the bottom. I'm sorry. I did not enjoy my time in the Dead Sea. It's interesting. I'm glad I got in, but I'll never do it again. But anyway, that setting aside, you know, the, the problem with the Dead Sea is the only thing, everything just flows into it and nothing flows out. Let me tell you something. If you want to have life, you've got to not only allow the Holy Spirit to flow into you, you've got to allow the Holy Spirit to flow out of you. Well, I told of some pastor who was talking and he was saying uh, that we all have the Holy Spirit inside. And yet the Holy Spirit's busting out, trying to get out. Come on. And that's true. Amen. He wants to flow through us. Amen. And you've got to maintain it. Just suppose someone gave you a brand new sports car. A Camaro. The gas tank is filled. Come on. Oh, yeah. There's some power underneath that hood. Let's take it back to the garage. Don't do any maintenance to it. Let it sit there for about 15 years. And you're going to see how far you're going to get. The battery's going to be dead. The gas is going to be corrupted. The tires will be flat. It won't start. It won't go anywhere. The fully illuminated, super chrominated gear shift knob probably has a little bit of rust on it. Come on. Here you hear what I'm saying? If you want a fresh feeling of the the Holy Spirit, you've got to have a powerful relationship with the Lord where not only, uh, not only are you with Him in prayer, not only are you in the Word, but you're out there doing something in service for God. Come on, somebody. That'll keep it fresh. That way you won't be looking back and saying, oh yeah, yesteryear, the, I remember when, oh, I had a revival meeting back then. I went to church and then God, no, 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 no. What's the Holy Spirit doing today? Amen. Let's keep it balanced. Come on. How many think that's pretty good preaching today? Amen. Then number two, we got to balance our daily witness with our daily walk. The Bible calls us to live a different kind of life. Christians don't live the same way that people in the world live. Am I right? Amen. It may be old-fashioned preaching, but it's Bible preaching. Sin will rob you of spiritual power. Look at the life of Samson, once committed to God, once full of spiritual power, once defect, defeating God's very enemies, but yet he laid his head in Delilah's lap one time too many, and when they cut his hair, this is what it says in Judges 16 and verse 20, it said, but he did not know that the Lord had left him. Didn't even know it. Remember David's prayer after he sinned. This is what he said, Psalm 51, 10. He said, do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. <laughs> Amen. Don't think that you can maintain a life that's both filled with the Holy Spirit and also filled with everything else that's in the world. Come on. I just believe that the call of God is to live a life that's separated and set apart for God. The more consecrated and dedicated your life is, the more the Holy Spirit will be able to flow in you. Come on. Uh, the more you are able to be a witness. I'm not talking about witnessing. I'm talking about being a witness. I know there's a difference. There's a difference. Oh, there's a time when the Holy Spirit's going to prompt you that, to, to actually open your mouth and, and share your faith with somebody. That's a wonderful, glorious thing. I, I pray everybody uh, witnesses that way. But also, let me tell you something. Your very life is a witness. How you live your life is a witness. Come on. How you drive is a witness. I'm preaching to myself this morning. Come on. Somebody help me out here today. Amen. I'll just have you know that the Holy Spirit is concerned about what kind of a neighbor you are. He's concerned about what kind of husband or wife you are. He's concerned about what type of an employee you are. He's uh, concerned about the type of lifestyle that you live, everything about it. Come on. Who is the Holy He is the Holy Spirit. And I'm just here today to tell you that He will constantly be there, reminding you of who you are in Christ Jesus. Come on, aren't you grateful? 
grateful for the Holy Spirit. Amen. He'll tell you, listen, you don't have to go and do those things. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Oh, come on, somebody. Can we give the Lord a praise today? We've got to balance our witness and our walk. Got to balance our witness and our walk. 2 Timothy 2.20 says this. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for noble purposes and some for ignoble. Notice what the next verse says. If a man cleanses himself from the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes. How many say, that's what I want to be, amen? How many say, I want to be an instrument for, for the noble purposes of God. I, I want to be uh, ready to be used by God, to be serve Him. It says, an instrument for noble purposes made holy, come on, useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. Amen. And so what that's telling me that if I want to be useful to the master, if I want to be prepared to do any good work, I must cleanse myself of anything that doesn't please God. I remember back when I was in Bible college, I had a pastor that was teaching one of those classes. I dearly loved him. His name was David Owens. I'm sure he's with Jesus now. But I remember he had pastored for 40 years. Won't be long until I hit that mark. My, my, my. Ooh, I remember thinking when I first sat in David Owen's class, 40 years, man. You got to be kidding me. That was a long time. That dude's old. Here I am, David Owen myself. Here I am. And this is what he said. I never forgot it. He said, this is what he would tell you. And he's, preached, he's talking to future preachers, right? And he said, the man in the pulpit is the sermon. The man in the pulpit is the sermon. How many of you know that's just not true for preachers, hello? Or pastors or evangelists. All of us are sermons. Tell your neighbor you're a sermon, amen? You're a message, amen? You have to balance your walk with your witness, amen? You may not know it, but you are a sermon in shoes. You may be the only Bible that some of your friends and neighbors and loved ones ever read. So come on. How many say I'm going to keep my light shining bright for the King of kings and the Lord of lords? I'm going to do everything I can that people would be look at me and say, wow, He's amazing. She's amazing. Why? Because they serve Jesus with all their hearts. And then number three, I mean, we've got to stay in balance. We've got to balance all of our Holy Spirit experiences with God's Word. Not with what I think ought to happen, but with the Word of God. There are churches today that are totally out of balance because they refuse to listen to God's Word. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 40 tells, tells, speaks of, of what we need to do in regard to public worship. It says this, it says, but everything should be done in a fitting and an orderly way. I like that verse. Everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. You know, there are some churches, unfortunately, that just re read the first part of that and they just say everything should be done. You ever been in a church like that? Everything should be done. Doesn't matter. I was in a church one time where uh, people, while the pastor was up preaching, the people would stand up and just scream out, Ah! It's like to scare me to death. I'm like, what's wrong with these people? I asked some of the, I, you know, people with the little badges on, you know, that were leaders, like, what's going on? Oh, that's the Holy Spirit. I said, that's not the Holy Spirit. That's somebody standing up in the middle of the sermon and screaming. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah, lay hands on them, huh? In Colombia one time, when I was a missionary, and I was given an invitation. We, did, we held outdoor crusades there, and preaching on every single night. And, and, and uh, I'll never forget this one particular night. This entire family came, and I could tell I was the one preaching that night. And th I could see they were receiving, and they were, they were understanding, they were grasping it. But at the exact moment that I gave the invitation, this lady decided that she was going to get in the spirit and do one of these numbers with her arm. And she was just like hitting these people and pushing them and knocking them. And uh, so grieved me. I, I said, what are you doing? No, that's the Holy Spirit. I said, no, that, that's really the Holy Spirit. They'll know that was the devil. That was the enemy. Come on. And you know, every, you can't just go, everything should be done. <laughs> everything should be done. <laughs> I was in a church another time where, where the goal was, let's get everybody drunk in the Holy Spirit. 
They introduced the pastor as the, as the bartender. He's going to be serving up the drinks. I wanted to get up and stand up and preach on that. The Bible says, be sober-minded. Hello. You say, let everything be done. It doesn't say that. Everything should be done in a fitting and an orderly way. Now, let me tell you, there's the opposite side of that extreme. The opposite side of that extreme says that, er, that actually, this is a true story. I was sitting, I was with a group of pastors. We were visiting another church. I was in a pastoral uh, leadership role, training pastors in the Baptist church kind of a thing, a long story. But at, at, at any rate, we went to this church, and the pastor was talking to us of this large church on the other side of town. And this is what he said. We have a 58 minutes programmed service. 58 minutes. I wanted to say, and actually said, why not... He said, 57 minutes is too short and 59 minutes is too long. And he talked about literally, we time out everything that we do. The first song is exactly 3 minutes and 12 seconds, and the announcements are 2 minutes and 8 seconds. And this offering is going to take a minute and 5 seconds. And they had everything timed out. So it's exactly 58 minutes. I'm thinking, where can the Holy Spirit step into that? You see, they forgot the part that said, let everything be done. All they wanted was a fitting and decent thing. thing. How many of you know we've got to have a balance here? Come on, somebody. You say, well, what do I need to do to find myself in balance? I want to give you two principles. These are two of the most powerful spiritual principles. You need to write them down, okay? First of all, we've got to understand the difference between receiving and reacting. Receiving and reacting. How many know God's power and God's presence is very real? How many of you ever came into contact with God? Oh, man. You felt him. You know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm always curious about people who love apologetics because I don't need apologetics. I don't need to have someone say, no, these are the five scientific reasons why you need to believe in the existence of God. Let me tell you, I know I believe in the existence of God. You want to know why? I've met him. I've felt him. I've dealt with him. He's real. He's powerful. Yeah, do I got a witness in the house today. You know God is real. Amen. Why? Because you've run into him a few times. Amen. I know who God is. Amen. And, 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 and I'm talking, you know, and so what happens when people come into the house of God how, boy, how many of you know we want the presence of the Lord? We want His presence here. We want the presence of God here in a powerful, mighty way. Amen. We don't want any hindrance to the presence of the Lord. And what, what, what happens is that reactions among people vary. You realize that? If we were to shock everybody here, we wouldn't do such a thing. But if we were to take an electrical cord and shock people, probably a big, tough guy like Dwight, he'd probably just smile a little bit. A guy like me, I'd start crying like a baby. I don't know. <coughs> but uh, others might tremble. <coughs> but all, everybody would react in some way, right? The presence of God is powerful and real, and people react. And, <coughs> and, and, and I've always wondered why people are so afraid. It, it's okay. I got it. Thank you. Why people are afraid of emotion in the house of the Lord. Why is it okay to be emotional at a basketball game, at a football game, and you can't be emotional in church? Let me just say, can I just say that? Why is it okay for people to act like a nut? I'm to just watch a football game, watch an AT and, uh, you know, watch a, watch a football game, college football game. I was going to say AT and T. That's not even a football. Y'all know I'm out of my league. All right. They get crazy. They get excited. They get wild over a football game, over something that doesn't really matter. Let me tell you something. We're worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Isn't it enough? I mean, think it's okay for us to be emotional. Tell your neighbor it's all right to get happy in Jesus. It's all right to cry before the Lord if you need to. It's all right to cry out if you're hurting. It's all right to talk to Him like that. Amen. Why? Because we're emotional beings. But you see, one area that happens sometimes where people get out of balance is they start worrying more about the reaction than they do about the receiving. They think that the receiving is the, is the reaction and they're messed up. Messed up. You know, just because I react doesn't mean I receive. 